right, welcome into the PFF YouTube channel. I'm George Shahuri. This is Eric Eager. We're going to talk to you guys about some candidates for regression at the quarterback position, both up and down. Before we do, make sure you get a PFF Elite subscription, Premium Stats version 2, all the data that you need, plus our new gambling product coming out later this month. Go get it. So let's talk about a couple of guys first who might take a step back in a couple of areas. These tend to be things that are less stable, and that's why we sort of, if someone is really good at them, might expect them to revert to the mean. Yeah, so Deshaun Watson, for example, the Houston Texans, the rookie phenom a season ago, prior to the injury, he put up you know, 19 touchdowns, eight interceptions was the taste of you know, the NFL. Uh, you know, we, on the other hand, look at some of his data, and we see things like the expected points added on non-NFL throws, very unstable thing, very supporting cast dependent thing, he was first uh, in, in that metric. Also, his, his wide receivers dropped the least number of passes in terms of a rate as well as number uh, among all quarterbacks a season ago. We know that drop rate is a very unstable thing, so a few less uh, Deshaun Watson passes turned into positive gains probably this season. Yeah, to speak about Watson a little bit, those non-NFL throws, we're thinking things like screens, you know, scheme-dependent stuff. To put that in context, his pass rating on throws behind the line of scrimmage was 158.3. I don't expect that to happen again. He could still be very good, but just you'd expect that to drop a little bit. One other guy, young guy, who had a huge leap last year was Carson Wentz. The number one quarterback in terms of accuracy on tight window throws the year before, dead last. So I think there's some room, perhaps, to go back, maybe meet himself in the middle there. Yeah, we remember Wentz for all of the great plays he made under pressure. You think about against Washington on Monday Night Football, he yep. had that great throw to Corey Clement. Even in Seattle, in the game they lost, he made this terrific throw to Aguilar under pressure uh, that down the field and you know countless other plays that we remember. But as we wrote about on ProFootballFocus.com, passer rating... PFF grade, all the things that you can think about under pressure are one of the least stable things a quarterback does. Wentz fifth there last season, probably going to see a little bit of a regression, and not to mention the fact that both he and Watson are coming off of knee injuries. So uh, again, adding a little bit to to you know the sort of regression kind of uh, data there. Yeah, interesting thing about talking about stats that are going to regress. That means the quarterback could potentially play better from a grading standpoint. I think Watson is a great candidate for yes. that. But the stats that kind of you know result from certain plays might take a step back. So don't immediately get all sad and worried when you know you see the stats fall down. Maybe the play rises. With that in mind, let's think about some guys whose stats were not so great last year, but the process and you know the things that they've done in the past might lead us to think upward transition. Um, let's start with Matt Stafford. Yeah, so Matt Stafford last season was 30th of 34 in raw PFF grade when under pressure. Again, one of those things where, you know, some of it was masked by great supporting cast in Detroit, like one of the best in the league. But in terms of a process standpoint, you know, under pressure plays, Stafford could improve. And then, you know, a couple, you know, a few throws here and there and his stats sort of elevate themselves for a Detroit Lions team. Stafford's a good, you know, pretty good quarterback, but you see, anytime you see one of these particular sets of data that is lower, kind of the lower part, lower, you know, tenth of the, you know, of the data set, you're like, okay, maybe, maybe that can go up. And, and for Stafford, that was one that was glaring for us. Yeah. One other guy that comes to mind is Matt Ryan. So Matt Ryan, 2016, he was incredible, right? Mm -hmm. 2017, the pass rating dropped considerably, but you think about some of the things that really worked in it against him. He had the most passes dropped on third down. You can't have that. You're not going to sustain a whole lot of drives. Plus, he had the most tipped interceptions last year, so passes that weren't necessarily terrible that ended up getting picked off. Of course, we remember the butt interception against New Orleans uh, Thursday night. So a guy who we know is very good, has graded in our top five both of the past two years, uh, but you know the stats didn't back it up last season. Right. So you're looking at a guy who's a cluster one quarterback for us. You know, kind of an elite guy, but you know, people are asking what's wrong with Matt Ryan. And I think you know you could make the argument his play dropped, but I don't think I think what our data would say is that his play dropped far less than what his statistics did. Those third down drops are huge, right? Because those end drives, and you could add another 50 yards and a touchdown to drives like that. And so if you're looking at a player, especially from the statistical standpoint, to, to elevate themselves, I think Matt Ryan is another one. Okay, last guy to talk about here, the Chicago Bears. Everyone loves the Chicago Bears. Some people 
more than others. Mm -hmm. Some people are very bullish on the Chicago Bears. I'm excited. Matt Nagy coming in, your boy from Kansas City. Um, what about Mitch Trubisky? Are there a couple things that, you know, I know that maybe the play calling, all those different things are, you know, expected to change, but just some unstable things that might turn his way next season. Yeah, so, so with everybody, I mean, under pressure stuff is one thing to look at. He was a under 50 passer rating when under pressure. Uh, his team dropped six of those passes. Uh, again, we've talked about this ad nauseum, but uh, under pressure stuff, we generally expect mean reversion. But one of the things that we haven't talked about is play action, right? Mm -hmm. And play action of the quarterback statistics we've looked at is the least dependent upon quarterback strength, or it reflects quarterback strength the least out of all uh, quarterback data. And Mitch Trubisky there was, you know, 26 of 34, uh, two touchdowns, two interceptions. So if his team not only utilizes play action more, we're going to see bi a bigger set of data there. But if he just simply goes to league average uh, on those types of throws, we can see his statistics going, you know, you know, pretty highly uh, in the right direction there. And not only that, but he graded, I think, better than his statistics would, would suggest yeah. on play action. So all of those things together, plus, I think, as you said, better play, uh, better play calling would be, uh, I think, a good sign for the Chicago Bears and their young quarterback. Yeah, to speak to that play calling, the Chicago Bears ran the ball more uh, on first and second down in close games than any other team. So you'd expect they'd run a lot of play action then when they did pass. No, they did not. Uh, bottom five in the league on play action usage in those situations. So changing a couple things here and there, a little regression to the mean will help some guys, hurt some guys. Um, we'll be back soon with some team regression candidates and some other positions. As usual, subscribe to the PFF forecast, get a PFF Elite subscription. We'll see you guys later.